I think we're live right now. Oh, and, okay, cool. And <laughs> I'm going to take Don't that take down. my nose. <laughs> um, <laughs> death to Apple is all I have to say. That's I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, but, but in all serious, I can't even be serious right now. I'm freaking, my brow is just... <laughs> so, so for those joining us, I, I greatly appreciate it. I know the, the link that we shared to at least 20 groups, a lot of them horror groups, all of them asking for David Thornton. I'm like, we got this. So, but that, that original link kind of died because the program I use said, if you schedule it and you don't do it within 10 minutes after you scheduling it, we put the kibosh on it. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, I'm babbling on <laughs> to another episode of Obscure and Obscripted. This is the unscripted part, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you were obscure for a while. Like, where is he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we have our very special guest, David Howard Thornton. And uh, again, I mean, Danny, our our other co-hosts. Uh, I'm a little flabbergasted. Danny, you're going to have to help me out with this tonight. Just so everybody knows, Apple, Danny said that I had some echoing, so I plugged in Apple earphones. My computer crashed. I'm going with orange from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Those apples are lemons. <laughs> and here. I need a new gang symbol, um, Android for life. Um, <laughs> yeah. Android, yeah. I've never had a problem with mine. Right. Hey, right. Send me a free phone. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm all about the Android also. And Product placement. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Product placement. Absolutely. Um, um, from art. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in my color, white and black. <laughs> Um, so, again, those that are used to joining us, you know that we usually have our ducks in a row. We have a bunch of pictures, a bunch of questions to ask. So, Danny, I'm putting it all on your shoulders. Take it away. Do what you want. Oh boy. I have so many questions, so mm -hmm. go for it. This is the, uh, I'm, I'm so child. excited. And, and when, I, when I blame Danny for the earphones, uh, it, it really isn't true. Um, I have this. Yeah. Don't get art, art pissed off at me, please. I would have seen what he does. Like, um. I'm silent but violent. <laughs> violent. I'm like I a fart. Love that. You can't have a fart without art. Art the fart. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, just let me know what I, I'm going to ask David immediately is can we interview you again? After <laughs> See, I'm going to ask now because, you know, we're already embarrassed and everything. We have him on the spot on camera. So if he says yes, then. <laughs> uh, Danny, uh, I'm going to name him up here. Oh, he totally disappeared. <laughs> he is. Okay. <laughs> At least he has a sense of humor about it, which is greatly appreciated. Danny, I'm going to leave you with uh, David for a moment, and uh, I'm going to start looking at some of the comments. <laughs> okay, great. So I guess my first question is, how did you get into the role of art? When, when did that happen? Oh, that happened back in, um, like, I think about April of 2015. I auditioned originally. I came across, like, an audition on... Uh, a website for actors called Actors Access. Give me free membership. Um, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I came across an audition on there looking for like a tall, skinny guy that can that has like you know experience with clowning or like physical comedy. I'm like, hey, that's me. So I like submitted my. Oh, I told my reps to submit me for it, and they got me the audition. It was like you know, simple as that. Well, I can tell you, I mean, I've seen a lot of horror movies, and there has never been a horror movie that has come out recently that has made me have to walk away as many times as that one did. And your talent, holy cow, I mean, you have the most natural ability. And I actually was in Phoenix at Mad Monster, and I walked past you, and you 
did the face at me in while you were in costume. Oh yeah. It took me a long time to come back from that. <laughs> <And I'm> not, <laughs> one of the scariest moments of my life. I do, I do have to ask while you were filming, did you, what did you have to do to, to get into character for that? I mean, because you are just so creepy. <laughs> This is amazing. Just myself. She is Louise. That is that's amazing. Did you draw inspiration from anything or anyone? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I took a lot of inspiration, oddly enough, from like not really horror villains, but from like old uh, silent film actors like Chaplin and Keaton, even like you know, um, you know, Harpo Marx or like uh, Rowan Atkinson. You know, Mr. Bean. He was a big influence, and also. Um, uh, Doug Jones, big, huge influence as well, who I'm going to be meeting now at Mad Monster Party next year in Charlotte. I'm like, woo! <laughs> I, I'm going to be fanboying there. I'm going to be like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's Doug Jones. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, so, yeah, that's who I got a lot of influence from. Of course, also Freddy Krueger. Um, Chucky was a big influence as well. Jason, Mike Myers. I took a lot of influence from them. Joker was a big influence as well. And I also from my my buddy Stefan Carl as well. I like uh, who I understudied for five years is uh, the Grinch on the Grinch, How the Grinch Stole Christmas the Musical. He kind of took me under his wing all those years ago, and because he's like a master, he went to school for like clowning, and so he he's a master at that. And he basically helped me fine tune all my skills set in that area. I learned a lot from him. He was an awesome yeah. guy. That is so, oh my gosh, that is so amazing. I was going to ask, did you have any formal acting training before you became an actor, or did you just kind of jump no, right into it? really. I just, I my training was on the job training, I would say. I, I learned from my better actors when I was, grew, I mean, grew up doing theater, like community theater. So I just learned from everybody around me. I didn't go to school and have someone tell me, okay, this is the Stanislavski method and blah, 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 blah. This is how you become the character, blah, blah, blah. No, I didn't do any of that. I just basically just learned from watching people, it, just both you know, actors and just people in general in everyday life and just adapted my own style. That was my thing. It was just like, I, I, I don't really think you can really be taught how to act truly. You just, you just observe and make it your own. That's what I do, at least. <laughs> well, you killed it. I mean, figuratively and literally, you did such an incredible job. Is there a scene when you were filming art that sticks out as your favorite, like the most challenging or? Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. My, my favorite scene the film was the pizzeria scene. That was just a lot of fun because you got to see so many different sides of art in that scene alone. You saw his playful side, you saw his just, you know, weird side, creepy side, then you just saw his just flat out, just evil, malicious side when he's like killing everybody in there. And this was like, it was fun. It was so much, and I got to play around a lot in that scene too, especially with, you know, the, the more humorous aspects, just like making the faces and stuff like that. They, Damien just let me play. So I had so much fun doing that scene. Plus, it was inside and warm. <laughs> yeah, in pizzeria. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm an Italian kid. I'm a big Italian kid, but uh, <laughs> going to a pizzeria from now on, it's not gonna ever be the same. <laughs> and to hell if I'm ever gonna use the restroom in a pizzeria again. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> It's like, oh, I'm probably going to get blamed for now on. Like, if anybody has a messed up restroom and a pizzeria, it's all going to be blamed on me, I think. <laughs> going to say art the clown. <laughs> yeah. People are just going to, like, just be writing art with poop on them. <laughs> I'm going to be getting, like, hate mail, like, from people. It's your fault. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but I got to say, I think my favorite scene of that whole movie, the one that shocked me the most was the skin scene. Oh, oh, yeah. Nothing has ever... I've never seen a horror movie that literally made my skin crawl like that one. And that scene, I was like, oh, he did. Oh, shit. I did not see that coming. I was like, yeah. oh, we're going to see the sweet side of art. Oh, that was a fun scene, too. <laughs> no. for the crew. That wasn't as fun for the crew to film. <laughs> like, How long did it take you in the makeup chair and, like, special effects in that film? Uh, it took about four hours at least every single day. Sometimes more because Damien was doing my makeup in addition to uh, – filming everything and directing everything. So he would have to leave me at times to go like set up shots or go film shots and come back. 
So, I mean, I, I know there were some days where I would get in the chair at four o'clock in the afternoon. I wouldn't get out of the chair until midnight. Then I would have to film for the rest of the night. Holy crap. So 18, 20 hour days. What? I would say the most is probably maybe a 14 to 16 hour day that we had. Cause we would have to race the sun. Wow. Yeah. Could, could you eat and drink comfortably with that? No, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 that was, that was quite the challenge. I would always, cause like, especially with all the makeup around the mouth, I had to like be very, very careful with that. And I, I that, and, talking about the pizza Ria scene. I mean, that was a real pizzeria we were filming. And so they actually fed us with pizza there. And I, I'm one of those people that's morally opposed to eating pizza with a knife and fork. <laughs> and I, I just think that's just blasphemy. And I had to do it. And I was so mad. I was like, and and they, they, they and of course they're not used to people eating pizza with a knife and fork. So they have the, the plastic cutlery there. And so, I think Jenna or someone just got me on video because I'm sitting there in my costume and makeup just trying to cut into this pizza with a fork and I'm just cussing at it the whole entire time. <laughs> and then I'm trying to delicately just put it in my mouth. Every bite is like kind of ah, 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 trying to get it in there, not messing up the makeup. They're just giggling watching me trying to eat this pizza the whole entire time. So I was like, yeah, you know. Because <laughs> I love to eat, you wouldn't know it by looking at me, but I love to eat, and that was always like my biggest concern. It's like, oh, what are we having for dinner tonight? Because I have to be able to eat it somehow. I mean, <laughs> if they got hamburgers, I would have to like just tear apart the hamburger and just eat each individual piece by hand. I was like, this is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is wrong. I need a knife and fork. Right on. Uh, I, I kind of actually wanted to touch base on, and I don't know if it's a sore subject or not with you, mm -hmm. but uh, Stefan, mm -hmm. I mean, and your influence from him and with the How the Grinch, the Soul Christmas and Lazy Town. And I had that killer fan picture of you as Art and him as, uh, I forgot his name, Robbie Rotten together. Yeah. It was a beautiful picture. It was a I mean, yeah, yeah, that hit hard. That hit hard. He um, passed away about a month ago from cancer, and that was that was a hard one. That was, I mean, he he had been suffering for two years with that, so he he fought the good fight there. But I mean, I mean, he was still doing shows even earlier this year despite the cancer. That's, I mean, that's how much he he loved doing what he did, and that's I, I found so much inspiration just from that. It's like, yeah, he knew that he was dying, but he didn't care. He's like, no, I'm going to still try to bring joy to people any way I can. So, like, he, he was a true, true professional and just true humanitarian to him. He loved people, especially children. I, mean, I, I remember he would do, like, um, we would sometimes do 12 shows a week with Grinch, and he would do every single one of those, and we'd have sometimes a four-show day. And he would still be at the stage door after doing four shows in that day to go – meet the fans afterwards when like most of our cast mates would just go and leave to go to the hotel bar. He would stay there and make sure he talked to everybody that was waiting for him at the stage door, which says a lot about the guy. I mean, he just appreciated people. And, you know, I, I learned a lot from him to be that way too. I was like, I, I, I did the same thing. I was, I, I always love going to like the stage door and just, you know, meeting people afterwards. So it's like, yeah, but he was awesome. Truly talented oh. man. Oh, well, absolutely. And you're doing the same exact thing now at the horror cons and everything. Wow. You're engaging with the fans. And I mean, we're parts or we're members of a number of horror groups and we can see all the fan picks and you hanging out with big smile. And it, it's just awesome. It is fun. It's just a blast. I mean, I've, I mean, I've gone to like conventions before all this happened, so I'm like, it, it's kind of fun being on that side of the table this time, and it's, I, I, I know what it's like to be out there. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's so much fun, and it's, I, I love interacting with people because it's like I, I truly appreciate the fans for you know that they're the ones that have made this movie successful. So I'm like, I want to be there for them as much as possible. Oh. And it is so cool how much you stay in character too during the photo ops. I know my friend got stuck in the elevator with you, and she has a fear of clowns. By the oh, time yeah. she got off that elevator, she was that. almost in tears. She couldn't even walk. She's like, "You're never gonna guess what just happened to me." <laughs> I think I even honked the horn at her a few times. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely, she yeah. wasn't the, the right. She wasn't right in the head for about six <laughs> hours. After that. Yes, I did my job. <laughs> you did it well, apparently. Uh, 
So David, part of our show is we get comments from the viewers and mm -hmm. I'm going to pull a couple of them up. Um, there's a lot of love and a lot of waves. So I'm going to kind of try to go. I, first of all, our girl Kelly showing lots of love. She, Hello, she, Kelly. she met you a couple of weeks ago. Danny, oh, yeah. do you recall where uh, Kelly was? Oh, uh, this, back to Kelly. Texas. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to see you again in Chicago. Me and Kelly will be together for Days of the Dead. Oh, yeah. That's going to be so much fun. I'm so excited about Chicago. <laughs> nice. Um, we, we got this other character, Troy ba ba Bailey. Ba Bailey? Ba How do you pronounce that, Danny? Definitely. This is my husband, <laughs> who's also a huge, huge, huge Oh, fan. that's why. Okay. I was like, man, are you having problems? <laughs> it's not the headphones, I think. <laughs> that was sarcasm just to build up to. No. <laughs> what sarcasm? <laughs> you have no idea, do you? <laughs> None. None. Love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so how did the other actors and actresses react to you when you were on set in makeup? They were actually okay with it. It's more when I took off the makeup, that's when they reacted because they were so used to seeing me in makeup because I was usually already in most of my makeup when they arrived on set. So I, I remember one spe uh, specific was Samantha who played Victoria in the film. Like we were, we had already filmed several times together and there was like one day she got to set right before I got in makeup. And I, I said hi to her and she didn't know who I was. <laughs> <laughs> and then she freaks out, and I was like, "No, it's me, Dave." And she's like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> you know <what>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it, I mean, I think there was even some people I, I saw the like the premiere that they're like, "So, oh my god, that's what you look like." <laughs> like yeah, you want me to put the makeup back on? <laughs> I look better that way. That is awesome. Um, I'm going to go through a, a couple of waves just because people are ecstatic to see you. And if you actually mention their name, mm -hmm. you're going to make their year. So Sweet. if you don't mind, there's a few here. Is that okay with you? Sure. All right. And, and you try to pronounce their names and last names. Oh, name. God. <laughs> Beth Germani, I'm guessing. What's up, girl? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, uh, this is supposed to be about David, not Danny, but okay. Uh, well, hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> if you haven't seen Art the Clown, go see it. Go watch the movie. Karen, hey. <laughs> Karen Parker is, 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 she's wonderful. They have a group that they've helped us out in tremendously. And hi, Karen. Absolutely. And What's up, Bethany? What's up, Queen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to look over. Oh, let's see. I, uh, I got to scan things first to make sure they're appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I can only imagine. <laughs> Trust me. I, I know. <laughs> um, all right. I'll go with Melissa's. <laughs> hey, Melissa. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah there, there's that Troy, I that Ali, fragile guy. <laughs> Character acting was out of this world and terrifying, pun intended. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a big horror fan, and we watched it together. And there were so many moments where we would just kind of look at each other, and he would just be like, "Okay, we got to pause. We got to pause for a second. <laughs> <laughs> collect <laughs> myself. <laughs> Get right." Were there any scenes during like? When you were actually like um, getting gory and stuff, were you? Because I'm sure. I mean, the, the the special effects were so incredible. Were there scenes where you had to like take a step back and walk away and go, "Damn, that was rough." <laughs> um, more so it was like I just wanted to make sure that actresses were not hurt because <laughs> that was my big thing. It was like I don't want to hurt you, which I, I imagine was probably weird for them because like one second they're I'm like strangling them, the next second I'm like, "Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you you fine? You fine? You fine? You fine?" <laughs> so yeah, that that was always my biggest concern. So. <laughs> Was it oh. was it kind of um, was it easy for you to transition into being in character and then transition being out of character, especially with not speaking? Did you find that yeah, pretty pretty I, easy? 
that's something I've always been able to do. That's the type of actor I am. I can like, as soon as I hit the stage, like the, the wing or something like that, I'm in or out of character. It's no bit, I can turn it on, turn it off when I need to. That's amazing. Yeah. I don't so have to go full on, you know, just, you know, Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> I use your acting as examples in almost everything we do. Kelly and I have a horror review that we do on the weekends. And I can't tell you how many times that we've seen another actor and we're like, nah, they're not that good. Like, haven't you seen David Howard Thornton? That guy doesn't say a word. He's one of the scariest actors ever. And we've used him a lot. So I'm curious, was there no like mime school or anything whatsoever? You that was was it ad libbed? Was it yeah. in the script? How did that work? Yeah, I did. I didn't go to school for any of that. I, I that's all just from learning from watching the greats my whole entire life. So yeah, I just adapted it my own. <laughs> you did an awesome job at it as well. Yeah, Damien let me play around a lot on set for those scenes, especially. He was just like, you know, it's like, okay, let's just go for it, see what you come up with. And so he would just sometimes just let the camera roll. Like that when I was making all the faces, he let it roll for, I think, like five minutes because he forgot to say cut because <laughs> they're just so busy watching because I just kept on making faces after face after face after face. I was just like, they're like, well, you kept going. I was like, well, I was just waiting for you to say cut. <laughs> <laughs> when you were on the trike, was that in the script or was that something that you decided to do? Oh, that, that was actually in the script. The, the, the crash was not. <laughs> <laughs> I was crashing a lot on that thing because that thing was hard. Especially, I'm like 6'2 and I have these long legs and those big, huge waffle stompers on my feet that I was having to pedal <laughs> that thing with. So that was that was and that, that floor was really slick too. So it was like sometimes trying to get traction to get that thing going. I'll be, I'll be sitting there like spinning out and I'll just fall on my side. <laughs> oh, it was a very, that was like one of those nights we were very delirious too. So I think everybody was just cracking up way too much more than we should. I mean, Sam wasn't even really in any of those shots really, but she stayed there just to watch it all. And she was just cracking up. I think at one point I just started riding around singing bicycle race. It was just like, I was just having fun. Yeah. Do you and think he, we're going to see a future for Art? Do you think he's going to come back? I mean, the editing got it, definitely set it up to where it could oh, be def a possibility. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Damien's in the, he's almost, I think, almost finished writing the first draft of it right now. So we're um, hopefully going to get Studio to uh, fund us now. That's what he wants to do next was like, once he gets the first draft, he wants to shop it around to Studio, see if anybody picks us up. So, because we want to have a much bigger budget this time so we can do a lot more because we have some crazy, crazy ideas. So, but we need a bigger budget to do it. So, you know, it's like we had a, I'm, I'm still amazed with what we pulled off with the budget we had. It's just like, it, it's, it's a freaking miracle. <laughs> it's just so mind blowing to me that that movie is so scary and the effects and acting are just so phenomenal. And when it was it had such a small budget, I mean, that's something that you, I feel like you would see from, you know, one of the huge blockbuster hits is that, you know, cause it's, it's incredible. And it's just the talent of the people involved with it. That's what it is. It's just like, there's a lot of talented people that were working on this. And that's, that's the thing is like, people don't realize that with the indie community, there's so many talented filmmakers out there that, you know, and even these people on the crew, the, all the guys on the crew were great. And of course, my fellow actors and actresses, fantastic. It's just, everybody's just great to work with, all talented bunch of people. So it's just like, I'm, I, I'm happy it's getting the recognition, for, especially for those people as well. I'm like, especially Damien. I'm like, the guy's got talent. I mean, he can write, direct, does all these special effects himself. I mean, you don't see that many, you know, directors out there that can do what he does, which is, you know, it's impressive in itself. And I'm like, he, he needs to have a lot more recognition than he's getting. I, and I think this is finally getting him that recognition he deserves. So I'm hoping it's going to lead to more things for him just outside of Terrifier. That was going to be one of my big questions. Going forward, from forward, are you wanting to say more in the horror genre or are you wanting to branch out and do a whole lot? Oh, I want to do everything. I'm, I'm like, I mean, I've always done comedy my whole entire life anyway, so horror is a new thing for me. But I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. But of course, I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to just limit myself to just you know, doing horror. I'm like, I'll, I'm pretty much open to everything. I prefer comedy. <laughs> I, I don't know how it'd be like true, like, you know, like this is us type dramas and stuff like that. I'm like, 
<laughs> but I mean, I, I'm putting that out, put this out. I would love to be on like one of those CW shows or something like that, one of the superhero shows. I'm like, if they need a Joker, I would be happy to come in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just to bring man. Batwoman into the CW universe, I'm like, oh, that means I gotta have Gotham City there somehow. So, right, <laughs> bring me in, put me in, Coach. Absolutely. So that is the other thing I wanted to mention: that whole Nightwing series and you playing the Joker. The production value for a YouTube—I mean, was it just YouTube? But yeah, it's it's, it's all fan made. It's uh, it's none of it is like you know, it's funded by anybody big. It's all stuff that we've done ourselves. Just we're all big, huge DC fans, and we wanted to make a, a you know, a, a series, which is funny because in, in the show, I guess it's spoilers, but Nightwing gets killed off in the second season with a bullet to the head. And recently in the comic books, they just killed off Nightwing with a bullet to the head. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, so i mean that series it was a couple of years ago and i'm watching it as a new fan going holy crap yeah it's especially the third season. it's like they've really upped the game in the third season i mean we're still filming it we've been trying to film this season for like two years or so now and it's just like it, it's hard when it's all fan made because none of us are getting paid to do it so it's like trying to find a time when everybody can get together to film that's the challenge but it's, we have fun. We definitely have fun doing it. I love it. I'm like, I love, I mean, how could I not? It's like Joker's one of the best characters ever created. I'm like, yeah. I was like, of course I'll do it. I don't care about doing it for free. It's fun. Absolutely. Were you doing the Joker prior to that? Or was that your first Joker experience? I, I had been doing Joker just like I had like memorized uh, a monologue from the Killing Joke years ago. And I, I've, that's been part of my set ever since. And I, I know a few other Joker monologues. So I'm like, that's something I've just been developing over the years. Cause I've always wanted to play the character. And I was like, and I'm heavily influenced more from Mark Hamill's portrayal of the character anyway. So I put a lot of that into it because I think he's just the, the best version you can get out there of Joker. So, right. so yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So at, I watched past interviews and I know you actually are a comic book fan. Mm -hmm. So what are your feelings or what do you think of the new Titans show? Have you had a chance to watch it yet? No, I have. I didn't even realize I was out yet. God, I got so much stuff I got to watch. I have not watched it yet. I'm very intrigued to see it because I'm like, you know, the, those first pictures released, I was kind of like, ooh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, 70s Call Girl, Starfire. Uh, yeah, I, I still don't understand why she's not orange. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, she's supposed to be orange. And like, why? I mean, like, they made, you know, Zoe green for Gamora. So like, <laughs> why can't they make right. her orange? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm assuming the budget for <laughs> Zamora was... Uh, what fifty million? Eh, or... Just contact Trump's people. They'll get them. <laughs> <laughs> Government subsidies. <laughs> right on. But, but, yeah, I was definitely curious about your input on that. So you haven't had a chance to see that yet. No, I have not. I have not. I'm very interested though. I, did, I didn't know it was already out, so I'm going to have to check that out now. So I mean, with the whole DC universe and everything. Um, Personally, I'd like to see you as a Joker more than Joaquin Phoenix. I'm not. Wait, did I say that funny? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen your version, and I mean, holy crap! Well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I I love Joaquin as an, an actor. I think he's going to do a great job with the character what he's given. I don't doubt that anyway. I'm just opposed to them making a Joker origin film in the first place. That's just how, that's me personally. I'm just like, I don't, of all the characters from comic book history that are not supposed to have an origin story, that's the Joker. I mean, that's like, that. that's the one thing that the world's greatest detective could not figure out was who he was. Like right. when he sat on the Mobius chair, he had to ask, what is the Joker's real name? 
So I'm like, we shouldn't be smarter than the world's greatest detective. We shouldn't know who he is. And I know people mention Killing Joke, like, oh, that was his. I'm like, no, even Killing Joke, they say he even makes the point to say, you know, yeah, you know, you know, sometimes I remember my past one way, sometimes another. If you're going to have a past, might as well make it multiple choice. <laughs> so it's like you can't really trust the narrator right there. So it's like right. I, I think he's more interesting having uh, an ambiguous origin where you, all you know is he was the Red Hood, but you don't know who he was before that. I, I think that makes it. There's so many other other Joker stories to tell. You know, it's 75 plus years of canon to pull from for a good Joker story, and they want to do that. I'm like, no, you don't understand the character to begin with. I mean, I wish personally, I wish they had taken the the Joker one off comic that was released like about right after um about a year after Dark Knight came out, or even less than a year. But it was where he's released from Arkham, and one of his henchmen comes and picks him up from Arkham, and it's you're seeing everything from the henchman's perspective, just how just outright evil and just messed up Joker really is. Yes. I'm like, why didn't they do that story? And because like, that's a really good story. It's because it shows you who the Joker is, and you're seeing it from a bad guy's point of view. You know, someone that's right there with him, that's able to get in there and understand who this guy kind of is. And it's like, oh, it's so messed up. <laughs> it's like, like one, like part I loved in it was like, there's this one part where they're in the, um, he goes to get Harley, and she's been a, a stripper in this nightclub and stuff like that, and. Joker gets pissed off that she was used like that, so he takes uh, the nightclub owner and flays his skin off of him, pushes him out on stage with none of his skin. It's like, see what it's like to strip now. You know, it's just like that's great. <laughs> that's yes, that's how Joker's supposed. That to be. is what the Joker is about. He's a yeah. psychopath, but he thinks that's, that's like funny. The head. And, like, <laughs> and see, that's where I put a lot of that into art. I was like, that's. Art thinks that kind of stuff is funny too. And so like, yes, and that's why we all love it. It's like, oh, <laughs> I didn't even know what to expect. I remember when I when I watched the Terrifier, I really didn't know. I didn't know a lot about. I remember seeing um, ads and stuff for for art before that, but I didn't really know what to expect. And within the first five minutes of the movie, I was like, this is incredible. Like, where has this been? Why can't there be more of this? <laughs> I, it, I think what's so amazing is how expressive you are. I mean, I've never in my life seen an actor who can walk into a role, literally not say a word, and be as expressive as you are, and you don't you don't need to say anything, and you're still just as terrifying. I mean, that's just I couldn't say enough amazing things about that. I would kill to see you as as the Joker. That would be. Oh, uh, I would amazing. love it. I would absolutely love it. There's so much I want to do with that character, and it's just like I would. I would really, personally, I would love to get into the whole death of the family storyline from the comics where he kidnaps all of the, the Bat family and just yes. messes with yes. them. It's just, that's something that can't be done in a movie. That needs to be like a whole entire season of a show because there's so much that goes on, but it really gets into the nitty gritty about the relationship between him not just between him and Harley or him and the other villains, but him and Batman. It gets like that, what is really going on between the two of them. That, that, that There's this great moment that really helped me get into the the, the mindset of the characters. Like Batman makes this, this um, uh, a reference to like the Joker's eyes where he, there's something strange about his eyes. The way he looks at him versus anybody else. And he realized what it was, and that look that he gives him is the same look someone that's in love with someone gives them the person they're in love with. And I'm like, that's an interesting take on the character that he's, Joker is so infatuated with Batman. He's literally in love with him. And vice versa though. Yeah. Oh Absolutely. man. So. That's why he'll never kill him. <laughs> he's like, exactly can't right. kill him. There, there were a couple of stories where they killed each yeah. other. Yeah. But I mean, so it ruined him. <laughs> animated or live action? Which would be better for that? I would, I would really love to see that live action, but make it rated R. It needs to be rated R. Because I just the makeup that, you know, with the, the face after he's carved off his face and he's wearing that face and it's constantly rotting throughout the whole entire thing. It's just like, oh, God, that's so... 
Oh, I would love to do that. I'm just. Ugh. No, I'm excited for this. Like, oh my gosh. I'm like, why can't this happen? Yeah. <laughs> Suck it. I'm like, and I know like Kevin Smith has like put it out there that he wants to really direct a Batman story that's very R rated and horror rated. I'm like, well, there he's, he's talked about in Arkham, just something happening in Arkham Asylum itself. But, I mean, that's something else that he could do there. It's like, that could be very horror oriented too. It's just like, oh, it's dark. It's dark. I mean, there's like this one part where like, he locks Harley up in this room and there are all these other dead bodies in this room, all in these Harley Quinn outfits. And he's like, don't you know, you never wear anything to me. You're just a toy. You're a pawn. And it leads you to think that there were other Harleys before her. And it's just like, Oh God. No, no, no. Wait, 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 David, David, do the voice again. You got to do the yeah, old yeah. Old voice. <laughs> old, old voice and do it. Please. You really think there are uh, you think you're the only one that matters to me? You're nothing more than a pot, Harley. <laughs> yes! I just died on the inside, honey. I just died. Oh, he's it's so much happened. fun to do. <laughs> Holy cow, you are so talented. That is insane. I, I've, I've put a lot of thought into like why he like why he has a gravelly voice. It's like, well, if you if you fell in a pit of acid and all these other chemicals and you're probably screaming that gets down in your throat and it'll probably damage your vocal cords some. So I imagine that, you know. That's why you, uh, yeah, I, I think things through too much sometimes. <laughs> oh my god. And that's what makes you so incredible at what you do though. I mean that is I'm such a fangirl. <laughs> yup. Uh, uh, fangirl shit. Uh, uh, I've got D shit, DC shit behind me. Oh, I know. I, I love it. I Death of Superman was like my all time thing. Oh, I literally they I, messed that up in BBS. <laughs> oh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> Doomsday alone. Doomsday needs his own movie. He needs he needs like the the story arc that like Thanos had of that build up to that happening. It's like, uh, but let's just shoehorn it into the last. Yeah, exactly. And I, what the? Excuse my language, guys. What the fuck was that? Yeah, <laughs> looks like a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> Exactly. What the current Ninja Some Turtle? clone of Zod and Lex Luthor, and not the good Lex Luthor. That <laughs> Lex Luthor. I was just like, the hell? Like, it's like, if, especially if you know who Doomsday actually is in the comics, where he's been brought back to life thousands of times, and he remembers the pain and the torment he went through with each of his lives, and he's that that ain't he's just simmering anger and hate. I'm like, oh my god, that but he's just gonna be a clone of Zod in Lex Luthor. <laughs> oh, you got such a, a, a strong man, flaving, flaving. Oh god, like. God, just like Jerry Lewis. They should have just had Jerry Lewis play Lex Luthor in that. Oh, Superman and everything. Even. Hey, pretty lady. Hey, lady with the, 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 the shield and the sword. Oh, you're wonderful. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Awesome. <laughs> and what's embarrassing for me is I literally have a half sleeve tattoo of the death of Superman, Doomsday uh, Superman battle. I yeah. mean, granted, it's it, it's going on many years old now, but it, it's not. That movie made me created. cry. That made me cry. I remember going. I was in seventh grade when that came out, and standing in line for that comic with the, the black, the black the, bag comic. Yeah. yeah, black bag everything, and I'm just like open. I I wish we had bought two, <laughs> but it's like because I, I have tear open. I'm like, oh my god. And I just remember just like oh, reading that. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, it's the platinum ones that are worth the value now. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, hindsight, hindsight, right? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm probably ten years older than you, just based on. <laughs> I always bring it up my gray beard and everything. So, um, I, I actually, I actually, I saw your high school reunion. So maybe not quite ten years, but yeah. close enough. Um, but uh, I'm looking over things, and Danny, I, I've got a few things to. 
I'm embarrassed because <laughs> my microphone's in the way of my notes. So, Danny, take it away for a moment, please, while I get to my notes. <laughs> Sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> More than you ever know. I do have another question. I have a million of them. I could go on for hours. Million. Is there anybody, like, acting-wise that you really want to work with that's kind of, like, on your bucket list? Oh, God. I mean, if he was still alive, it would be Robin Williams. But, um, oh, that would be fantastic. But, um, gosh, uh, I would love to work with Doug Jones, especially. I think I could just learn a lot from him. I'm like, we could play father and son. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It would be a family picture. Oh, God. <laughs> So many people I would love to work with. I'm like, I, I think Kevin Smith would just be fun just to work with. You know, I, I, I think we would just kind of nerd out with each other the whole entire time. I think we'd be instant buddies. <laughs> I, I like to work with people I know I would just have fun with. I'm like, I, I've gotten to work with John Wesley Ship a lot you know, on like uh, Powder Burns, the audio drama we work on. And John's just the nicest guy. And it's like, you know, I, it, that's what makes it fun. So when you work with people, they're just genuine good people. That's So like anytime I find out celebrities are really fun and stuff like that, I'm like, I want to work with them now. <laughs> that's how I feel. I feel that way too. It's just finding out when they're down to earth and passionate. Like when I first added you on Facebook and you play this just most terrifying clown of all time. And then I, talk to you on Facebook. I'm like, he's so nice. Like, how does this, <laughs> how does this work? It's like, I have my moments. <laughs> I can really see Art the Clown becoming, you know, as time goes on, just like this incredible classic where people, I think you're going to have that where as long as you go to conventions, you're going to have people out the door to meet you for That's years crazy. and years and years ago. I, I would love it. I'm like, it's, you know, I, I know it's like Robert England after 30 years is still loving it. So I'm like, that's good to see. That is, oh my gosh, I, I, I hadn't seen the movie yet when I went to Phoenix, and I kicked myself so much. I'm like, this Chicago is going to be this a whole new chapter for me because I've seen the movie, and now I'm going to get a photo up. If I can brave it, if I can handle yeah. it when, we get, when I get up, I don't have a heart attack first. <laughs> I'm super excited. I can't remember if I'm doing a photo op at Chicago or not. If not, I mean, selfie at the table at least, so. No, oh, thank God. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> oh, I'll at least be doing selfies at the table. I, I like to bring my little hat and horn with me. That's a lot of fun. God. And that is what I noticed fans bragging about. They're like, you know, he may not be in full costume, but he has the hat, he has the horn. He's going to take the pick with you. He's going to sign the just amazing. Because yeah. it, it takes, unlike me appearing in full costume makeup, That that's a very rare occurrence because Damien has to do my makeup. So they have to bring Damien out there and that takes like four hours to put on. So that's, that's a whole ordeal. It's like when we did that at Mad Monster Party the first time we did it on the Saturday and we did it in the middle of the day. And I only got to be on the floor for two hours on the busiest day of the convention. So I missed a lot of people that day that wanted to see me. Oh, yeah. And so yeah, I, was, I, I, that was like at least five and a half, six hours of my time that I was doing the makeup and getting in and out of it and doing the photo op. So it's just like, yeah, it's like, so we're, we're doing, I think we're going to start off the day on that Sunday. So I like, so yeah, that, that'll be better that way, but it, it takes a lot of work. So I understand now why like Robert England doesn't really do the full makeup because it's the same ordeal for him. That's why he brings the glove with him. That's where I got the idea for the hat and the horn. I'm like, well, at least I can do that for people. So that is so cool. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even really think about that too. And I went through and looked at a lot of the photos that have been posted on Mad Monsters website of other people's pictures that they got with you. And I was like, I just kicked myself so hard. I was like, Oh my oh, gosh, why didn't I get that? Fun. It was so much fun, but it was just so much to go through just for like, you know, about an hour's worth of photos. And it was like, and now I got to get out of this now. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. And it, oh gosh, it was, it was a challenge because like we brought four masks with us. And three of those got destroyed on the airplane. The one that made it was the one that Damien had in his backpack, thankfully. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Because they got frozen in the, the cargo hold of the airplane while flying. And so they it messed up the masks and stuff like that. So it's like, okay, well, we know what to do next time. <laughs> I got a few things to touch base on with some comments here. Mm -hmm. Wow. Comparing. Just looking things over. Um, you guys can read that. One of you can. That that's pretty cool. Oh, that would be cool too. Yeah, I I agree, Scott. 
Danny, read it. Read uh, it. Oh, yes. Yes, Doug Jones. I also think, personally, David would play well off of Nicholas Vince. That would be fun. And Scott also says, hello, friends. Hello. Scott is affiliated with one of the larger horror groups that we are dealing with. And, I mean, they're an amazing group. We'll get to that shortly. Um, One of the questions I have, though, is, and I don't know if it's an awkward question or not, you were not the first art the clown no so i mean are people constantly mixing you up with somebody else or it happens from time to time the next level yeah i mean i i've, I've had some people come with that they'll have a picture of mike gianelli who was the original art for uh, all hows eve and ninth circle so they'll sometimes have a picture of him from on those films instead they don't realize that and i'm, I'm a, or, you know, other times I'll just, you know, say something on Facebook. And I, I always try to give credit where credit is due for that kind of stuff. So you absolutely do. I've seen it on your page a number of times and that that's awesome. Yeah, um, Mike did a fantastic job. It's like, yeah, it, that was that was literally big shoes to fill because <laughs> he set the bar high. Yeah, he, he created the character. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> so it was Mike in the first two films. They were short films. Mm hmm. Yes. And you were the one that, I, sorry, Mike, but he, David's the one that kind of brought it full blown into a movie. You were the first full blown movie. I yes. sound like an ass right now because I'm still stumbling over myself <laughs> from the English hard. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so when you first released or when they first released the film Mm -hmm. um you guys had minimal why am i freezing up it's okay you can do it (laughs) (laughs) no i can do it i'm looking at my computer and all the things on here saying what the hell is going on right now you're not speaking um (laughs) but (laughs) yeah um so netflix was it a huge impact or was the indie film guys i mean i saw it all over the place for the indie films i i it was already starting to snowball but i think netflix basically caused an avalanche it was just it went crazy after it released on netflix because it, it was able to get out there to a lot more audiences you know which sucks in some ways because, you know, people weren't buying the physical copy as much. But at the same time, more people were seeing it. So it's like, Meh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, is physical copy the way to go or video on demand? Yeah, I would say get the physical copy because it's got deleted scenes and, you know, behind the scenes footage and stuff like that in there, too. So, And we can get it signed by you. Exactly. You can bring <laughs> I, I, I sign a lot of those at conventions. That's fun for me. I wish I had them to sell, but I don't. But sometimes Dread Central will be at these conventions as well. They were at um, both uh, Cult Classic and uh, Mad Monster Party with me. So I was able to direct people over to them, and they sold out when we were down in Texas. That's, that's something I noticed was like the difference between like doing a convention before Netflix and doing a convention after Netflix. It was insane. It's like they sold out. People were like buying them like crazy. I was like, whoa. And it's like, there was just more of a demand. Just more people wanted to meet me because they knew who I was now. <laughs> At Mon- Mad Monster Party, it was like, you know, the, the real fan, not the real fans, but, you know, like the, the ones that had already seen it beforehand before it was big. So they, they recognized me, but a lot of people would pass by and like, well, what's this? Who are you? And I'm like, I'm art. <laughs> 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 I had just watched the trailer for it. I, I saw, I just heard about it like two or three days before I left for Phoenix. And I watched the trailer. And then I came home. And as soon as I got, I'm, I live in Alaska. So it was like a really big deal for me to get down to the States and go to Phoenix. Oh, yeah. As soon as I got home, I watched it and I was so mad. I was so pissed at myself. I was like, I had the opportunity to go meet this guy and like hang out with him for a minute and get photos. And I didn't. And I, Oh, so I'm like, thank God you signed on to Chicago. That was heartbroken. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited for Chicago. That's going to be a fun one. 
And I'm stoked. I've never been that far that direction. I mean, oh, I've been Chicago's a great city too. You got to go to like the museums there, like especially the Museum of Science and Industry. It's amazing. Oh man, I, I gotta make that happen. I want to. I just want to try the pizza. Like I'm oh, just still. Oh, the pizza's good too. But you know, I'm a New Yorker, so we're very picky about our pizza here too. So you know. <laughs> oh really? What part of New York are you from? Oh, I'm not originally from New York, but I live here. So I, I've been here 12 years now. So I, I live in Queens in Astoria. Oh my God, that must be huge. I can't even imagine. If Phoenix was the biggest city I'd ever seen. So. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> yeah, we got about 9 million people living here. So yeah. Yeah, Danny, if you ever compare New York pizza to Chicago pizza, you're going to have to find another show. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, Troy is from, my husband is from upstate New York originally. So yeah. I hear about it all the time anyway. It's a constant oh, yeah. battle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I like pizza, so I'm just happy wherever I get it from. He's I'm just like, whatever, just give me pizza. <laughs> yeah, just give me pizza. Give me pizza. <laughs> Just give me pizza. Put it in my belly. <laughs> well, see, the whole thing is with New York style pizza or Chicago style pizza, you order it at the restaurant, you eat it. Mm -hmm. Then it's instant bowel movement and you go to the bathroom and you smear shit. Exactly. <laughs> and then you blame it on art. Then you write art did this. Art was here. You had an art chart. The art chart. <laughs> art. Yeah, Where are you from art. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so pineapple on pizza. Hell no. Why are we getting on pizza, the whole pizza thing? Hell no. No pineapple on pizza. No. See, and I love it. So he's threatened to divorce yeah. me over it before. He's gotten really mad. Scott saying mm, pizza. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. All his fat kids, especially Italian fat kids, love pizza. Oh, how can you not? I mean, like, anytime I meet someone that doesn't like pizza, I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> this is a type of pizza for everybody, except for pineapple. No, no pineapple. No. I, I don't know. I, in college, I ate a pineapple pizza. It was at LST. Never mind. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Now I'm in trouble. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. you go, girl. <laughs> I'm ordering it in Chicago now, Kelly. Just watch me. <laughs> rebel. You. If they even be... sell it in Chicago, they'll probably just give me a look like, where are you from? Yeah. Like, so that'd be a great question. Do they sell so, so I get that, get in out Chicago? Of here. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> you gotta get out of here. You can't have that knock. Didn't mean to run over him. I ain't no, covering the money. Kill you. <laughs> the fools are gonna run over you. <laughs> uh, oh, no. I am looking at comments and nope, can't say that. Nope, <laughs> won't say that. I'd like to say that, but won't say that. <laughs> um, you got to understand, um, we, we, we've got to be completely respectful towards David. And <laughs> I can only imagine what you're seeing, especially maybe from Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> He's so oh, used to it. <laughs> <laughs> we get in trouble every single review we do. We're in, we mm -hmm. get in trouble. Oh, I know Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> we know Kelly. <laughs> Where are you from originally, David? I'm originally from Huntsville, Alabama. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm from the Bible Belt. <laughs> <laughs> from Jesus Town. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You're from the Bible Belt. How about you? Like Peter the people Town you went to school with and... down there are probably four or five from our oh, yeah. more so than we are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You need Jesus, David. You need Jesus. I love you. I can't watch this. <laughs> That's, That's just a sinful, sinful thing you're doing there, killing people and stuff. It's acting. I don't care. Jesus. Oh, my God. Brother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Ooh, getting the vapors over here. <laughs> you gotta do the hand thing with the vapors. Oh my goodness. Oh, you don't see it there. <laughs> <laughs> I could be doing so many things with my hands right now and you have no idea. <laughs> hey, hey, above the table. <laughs> <laughs> hand check. <laughs> hand check. 
<laughs> How you doing? How you How doing? You doing? <laughs> You didn't know I was doing this without pants the whole entire time. No. <laughs> I, I know somebody else has actually done that. Kelly. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Kelly. Kelly. No, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, no. <laughs> well, I got, I, I got a bunch of comments from Kelly that I don't know if I should show or not. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> David, uh -huh. what do you got coming on for cons in the uh, future? Well, I'm doing a chiller at the end of this month here in New Jersey. Then I'm doing uh, Chicago. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. New Jersey is still a state? Yeah. It's still there. Still can't pump your own gas. <laughs> <laughs> it's... A Amazing that you said that because my mother-in-law of almost 20 years said, we can't pump gas in Jersey. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I'm in New York. Let you. We can pump gas or we have the guy that will do it for us. Yeah. Then, no, New Jersey, no. you pump gas. They don't allow you. I, I <laughs> had an argument. I didn't That's know that that was the law. And I was like, I, 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 can't, I can do it, man. I, I'm, I don't need your help. He's like, no, man. I, I, I got to do the game. I'm like, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're it's like, actually the law here. And job. then you lift the <laughs> lever and you put it in. <laughs> I, it's, this is not rocket science, man. I don't know. Uh, this is. This is, I, I can I can pump my own gas. I've been doing. I was pumping my parents' gas when I was a kid. I thought it was fun, so I was like, "What?" <laughs> my boy Scott. <laughs> oh, I yeah. We filmed in Trenton. Actually, that's funny. He mentions that no one wants to claim New Jersey. I know people in Trenton who don't want to claim the place. Yeah, we filmed in Trenton. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Were you filming over the winter too, or was it? It was. It, it was during like uh, uh, around Halloween. 2015 that we're filming there in Trenton. That that place is ooh, Trenton. Wow. That had to have been so cool. Yeah, there there's some people that want to go like see the building that we filmed at. I'm like, I tell them no, don't go there. That like that 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 whole area is very sketchy part of town. I'm like, yeah, be careful if you do. Oh my god. I don't even want to give them the address of the building because I'm like, yeah, no, don't don't go there. Oh, like it makes me think that the girl with the cats, like, maybe just was random and not an actress. <laughs> like, maybe she was <laughs> no, no, that, that was part of it. No, the building itself, everything you saw in that building was real. That was none of that was set dressing. That bathroom was that nasty. Why? It was just oh. nasty. nasty. Ew. Yeah, that oh, was now I have all to that. It again. Ooh, that was all that. That was all there. We didn't add any of that. Oh my. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, we, we found like used condoms on the ground of that building. It was just like, like when I was lying on the ground, when I came up with that, the infamous scene with the, you know, the, the Buffalo Bill scene, I, I, I hated lying on that ground. That's the, the gross thing I, I felt I did in the whole entire film. I had to lie on that ground. I came up and like everything, every part of my body that had touched the ground was covered in just black. Oh no! <laughs> on this ground. So, David, yes. do you have Aflac? Aflac? <laughs> I a funny <laughs> thing. I was almost the Aflac duck when they recast Gilbert and Godfrey. Almost, I got so close. I was so upset. I was like, "Damn it!" Some like teacher up in like Oregon <laughs> won the part. I was like, "Son of a!" All right. <laughs> Yeah, because I can be set for life. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. I just go, ah, fuck. And you're like, here's your paycheck. Great. It's probably one. Have you always been that down. good at voices and mimicking people? When did you realize you could do that? Ah, first grade. It was uh, it was during story time. We were doing, uh, my, my teacher was reading a Mickey Mouse story to us. And this girl I had a crush on in my class passed me a note during story time asking me if I would be her boyfriend. And I just went, let out this, oh, you look gorge. And I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, goofy. You know, like, I how to do goofy. And I was like, my very first voice, I learned how to do <laughs> and, and it just kind of like snowballed from then. It's like uh, when like 
Who Framed Roger Rabbit came out the next year in 88. Um, I, that's when I learned who Mel Blanc was, that he did all the voices of Looney Tunes. So I was like, wow, one guy did all those voices? I want to learn how to do that. So I just started learning how to do voices. I, I don't know how I do it. It's just I have a knack for if I hear an interesting voice, I, I just pick it up. It's, it's that cool. is amazing. That happened yeah. to me the other day, I think, with Jim Cummings. I didn't realize he had done all the voices that he did. And I was like, wait, that's Steel from Balto. And then yeah. I was like, you've done pretty much everything you've ever heard from the 90s. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird skill set. I don't know how I do it. I can't catch a ball to save my life, but I can do a Bugs Bunny if I want to. Hey, <laughs> nice. nice, thank you. Oh. Holy crap. Oh Danny, of course I can do that too, you know. <laughs> Come on, folks. <laughs> so when I first heard your voices and your acting abilities and saw your whole bio, mm -hmm. John Kassir came to mind. You guys have very similar career yeah. path. And it's amazing because you're on stage at first and then you do this, you do that. Um, oh, I can't wait to meet him. I'm going to be doing a con with him in Sacramento next year. And I'm like, oh, goody. I, I just want to pick his brain if I get an opportunity to. Absolutely. I, it, it was amazing because we had John on about six or eight months ago. And the, the character actor from just mind blown. Yeah. And Danny's looking at me like, why am I not on here right now? I'm sorry, Danny. <laughs> Where did you go? He reminds me so much of John Kassir. Holy crap. It, it's John Kassir was on stage first, and then he had – they're so similar. It, it's really – That's awesome. Dumb. He's fantastic. He, I, so. I, I thought the first thing that I actually thought of when I first watched Art the Clown was he reminded me, his acting style and his approach reminded me a lot of Willem Dafoe, like when he first got his start. And I, I saw a lot of similarities, and he's one of my top five favorite oh, actors I love of all time. Him. Dude, God. He would, be so, he would make such a great old Joker, I think. Oh, like, oh my God, he would be so great. He really, oh, really like would. But that's who you reminded me of, that just that natural, raw talent that just you can't, you can't learn that anywhere. You just, you just have it. So do you, do you think the Green Goblin killed that, though, him doing Green Goblin? I would just, hope not. I would hope not. I mean, I, like, he's such a he's such a talented actor himself. It's just like, I think he could totally pull it off. Yeah, he's like, very well-versed. I mean, he's gone I mean, you think from going from The Last Temptation of Christ to the Green Goblin to, like, the Boondock Saints to yeah. the tomb, just kind of. Oh, I mean, he can so do cool. comedy and horror and pretty much everything in between. Oh, he's so he's he's got such an expressive face too. That's what I love about him. It's and that's where you really are so much alike, is you have that same just like natural expression that just can go for for miles. It's just, it's, I'm so excited just to see where your career takes you and to be able to, yeah, I interviewed him once when you're you know. <laughs> <laughs> Here's hoping it goes somewhere, you know. <laughs> oh, it will. It's gonna take off, and I'm gonna like use it to my advantage giving you a forewarning now. I'm going to tell everybody, I'm like, yeah, I knew him. I talked to him. <laughs> I would love it. I would love it. I was like, I was, I was actually, this, this is an idea I've been floating around. I'm trying to get it out there as much as I can to the world. It's like, I would like to, because I think Deadpool proof this can be done now is to do a reboot of the mask, but do oh. this, the actual dark horse comic version of it, where it was violent and gory and over the top like that. I'm like, I don't oh, know. I would kill. Understand? Killed play Stanley Ipkiss because I am literally Stanley Ipkiss in real life. That oh. is me with all the cartoon stuff. That is me, and I'm like, I would. That is like, I would kill to play that role. So all right. I, 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 I want to put that out in the universe as much as possible. Yes, yeah, yeah. mask. I, will really be I, I am just like, boom. My, my mind's blown. Boom. I know. I'm like, I would pay money to see that. I would pay big money to see that. Yeah, I would, it would just it would it would do well. I think you know they could, and they could you know maybe it wouldn't even have to be like a movie. It could be like a Netflix series, and they could like have it where in the comic book other people took on the mask over time too. So it's just like it could keep on going. It's like there's so many possibilities with that. Just like and they could get away with that the over the top you know 
uh, blood and guts and stuff like that they did in the comic because you know like what they did like on Ash versus the Evil Dead and stuff like that is you know it works. Oh my god, that would be incredible. Yep, just put that out in their universe. <laughs> oh my. So yeah, I mean, with the comic book versus Jim Carrey's version of the mask, the comic book is way more. It's violent and oh, it's crazy. I like the one thing they did kind of put in there from the original comic book into the movie was the whole thing with the uh, the mechanics where he shoved the tailpipes up their pooters. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the pooters. The tailpipe up their tailpipe. <laughs> yeah. Tailpipe up the tailpipe. <laughs> that does interest. Exactly. Hold up your lug nuts. It's time for an overhaul. <laughs> I love it. Holy crap, man. You and the voices. That's oh, great. That's why I would love to do it. Because I would be able to play with all my voices and stuff like that. I was like, oh, God, I would love it. Do all oh the cartoon gosh. stuff. You need to just do, like, YouTube impressions where you just get on and just do, like, <laughs> just, I mean, oh, my gosh. I would, oh, I'd have that as, like, saved on my phone, I think. I was never just my <laughs> reading. It's just you and all the impressions. No, no. David needs a uh, Hundred and fifty million dollar budget and a mask film, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'd love it. That would be like so much fun. So, get Jim Carrey to play my dad. I don't care. <laughs> oh my god! You know, rumor has it he moved to Anchorage. He moved up here, I think. But really? everyone's saying, I know he, I've I've seen him up here. I didn't meet him, but he walked past me yeah. um, at a hotel down in Homer. Oh, once and I got to wave at him and I died on the inside. But oh. he comes up here all the time and I actually think he lives up here now. So you just have to come up here and find him and then have a beer with him That's awesome. and get him to get on board with you. Uh, <laughs> he he was another big influence on me in, in my adolescence with you know theater and comedy and stuff like that. Just, he's such a physical actor, and you don't see those kind of actors that much anymore. The, the, a lot of that physical comedy has been lost to the world. It's just like that used to be the norm back in the day you know because you know it's all vaudeville comics because you know they were used to performing for an audience where you had to be able to your physicality had to reach the back of the audience so that's that's what that's where it all came from it's like uh and his story too is incredible i mean that how you know where he came from and everything it's really inspiring it's just just like yeah he i mean he worked hard very innovative comic i mean i i still remember back you know like living color days when he was just known as the white guy (laughs) (laughs) And the white guy, Fire Marshal Bill over there. That was like, like Ace Ventura was right in my childhood. Oh, I grew, I mean, God, Jim Carrey was my very first crush, crush ever. Was Jim Carrey, it was from Ace Ventura. I was obsessed with that movie. I watched God, it in a little time. Those two movies, I, I watched them again last year, and I, I was still laughing my ass off the whole entire time. But this is still really good. All right. Oh, first of all, Fire Marshal Bell, and yeah. then uh, Jim Carrey <laughs> coming out of an anus of a rhino. The oh rhino. God. Don't look, kids. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> a little finger, just a finger coming out first. <laughs> 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 oh, <God. laughs> He's giving birth. <laughs> oh, God. Maybe that was a perfect face. Do it again. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 three darts is too much. <laughs> I, I still like to do the thing with the sliding glass door around. Ah, ah, ah. This is fun. Oh my gosh. You're hysterical. I, I, I have I, never seen anyone do it that good. Oh my holy crap. <laughs> so my favorite is when he got when he gets like shot in the leg and he's like Doing the whole, ah! <laughs> 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 oh, it's in the phone. It's in the phone. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I can't stop laughing, and oh, I'm God. trying to look at and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I have to cover the mic. Oh, that's so great. It's just, oh, so fun. Hi, old Silver. Away. 
<laughs> oh god. Can we just refilm it with you? Can we just redo Ace Ventura Pet Detective and then just yeah. you? <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> This is so so, well, David, you have to have offspring now, so you can do Ace Ventura Jr. Also, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love also like that the old guy, uh, the, you know, his landlord is actually Salamanca from uh, yeah, uh, Breaking Bad. You know. Ventura! Yes, Satan! Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that scene. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's great. Oh, my God. I just remember the damn raccoon. That made me cry when I was little. Oh, God. <laughs> Finkel is Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. <laughs> Einhorn is Finkel. I guess the man. <laughs> Just crying in the shower. It's just <laughs> the plunger hole, hole, hole. <laughs> oh God! It's, I love that movie. I just love, like, uh, movies are so funny. Uh, sorry, ur, ur, ur. <laughs> Bumblebee tuna, Bumblebee tuna. Balls are showing. Bumblebee tuna. <laughs> I can't do. Oh, I can't. Oh. oh. <laughs> Go up, you're out. You're out. Go, no, no. <laughs> was, All right, sorry. guys. Right. We are five minutes. Danny, David. Yeah. Talk about David. You got to give us where you're going to be at and cons. Where we can find you on social media. Um, whoo. <laughs> I'm like, oh, where can we find you on social media? Yeah. And cons. Well, first of all, cons, I'm doing Chiller at the end of this month in New Jersey, as I said. Uh, Chicago, I'm doing Days of the Dead. I'm also doing Days of the Dead in Atlanta next year in January. Oh, I'll be at that one too. Yay. Yay. Uh, February, I'm doing Mad Monster Party in Charlotte. Uh, I think March, we're trying to get me to Horror Hound. We're, you know, we're still working on trying to get me there. So, you know, you know, tell them, get me. Um, they're, God, they're, all, I'm basically doing all the Days of the Dead next year and probably all the, the Mad Monster Party. So we'll see how that goes. I'm also doing, a, I can't keep them all straight. There's one I'm doing up in Ontario next year, doing one in Knoxville. I'm doing a lot. I'm, do, I'm basically doing a con a month all the way up through July so far. So. Which is 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 great. I, I love it. I love it. I think maybe December might be my month. I don't do a con, but you know, whatever. But um, other than that, you can find me on Twitter under David H Thornton. Um, I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, but I can't really add people anymore on either one of those. I can't really follow people because I've reached my limit, which is stupid. <laughs> so do you want... have a fan page on Facebook, um, uh, or is it I just don't. Oh, sure. I don't have a fan page. There's an Art the Clown fan page, but I don't have a personal fan page. I, I probably need to make one of those. I, I suck with computers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really suck with computers, so I, I need to get on that somehow. Maybe someone else can make one for me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah. But other than that, yeah, just, you know, I, basically all those, I'm under David H. Thorne. They're, they're like so many people that have been friend requesting me on Facebook recently. I just can't add them. I'm like, I'm sorry. I want to, but I can't. So I'm like, yep. <laughs> you, know, you have to make a you have to make a regular like a regular fan page, and then I can brag that I'm one of your personal friends and yeah, tell everyone how cool yeah. I am. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> such a pain in the butt. It was just like there's so much, so much you have to do now with like social media and stuff like that. So it's like, oh, it's not like the good old days, but you know, <laughs> what can you do? First world problems. First world problems. Oh, ow, ow. My roommate's cat. Just so, Bethany says, love the Let It Be video on YouTube. Would love to see more like that sometime. Yeah, I need to do some more of those. That was fun. That was fun. I, I, I sing Let It Be as all these different Warner Brother characters. I call it Let It WB. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> I have to check that out. <laughs> yeah, it's on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel, but I don't usually put a lot of videos on there myself. I'm 
you know, so like whenever I feel creative, I randomly every year or so I'll think of something I'll put on there. But, you know, I'm not like some people where they every week got stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, God, no, I suck with the writing my own stuff. So it's like, yeah, if I ever have the creative, you know, lightning bolt that strikes me, I might do something. My gosh, you are so freaking talented. I'm just like stoked to see all the things you're going to do. I mean, it's, and I'm, and I'm just as excited to see art come back. I'm not going to lie. The way they set that up, I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Oh, we got some crazy ideas planned for the sequels. So, <laughs> sequel. There's going to be a sequel. You heard it here first. There's going to be a sequel. We just don't know who's making it yet. <laughs> we'll, get make it we'll get there. Somebody's going to make it. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, like, it, I, I think if you know, a studio passes on us, I think they're stupid right now. <laughs> I was like, studio. Come on. Who needs a freaking studio? You get this whole environment. <laughs> I seriously, I, I watched Pennywise, the new, the new It movie, and I was like, this is the scariest car movie ever. And then I watched The Terrifier, and I was like, I was wrong. I was so wrong. Yeah, we didn't rely on CG. No! Right. Oh my practical gosh, effects. So practical effects. Hold up. I have to mention something before we go out. Mm -hmm. All right. So practical effects. Hey, ladies. All you ladies out there that kind of laughed at every movie you ever saw with a guy getting kicked in the nads, getting oh. punched in the nads, getting whatever in the nads and you guys are going <laughs> <laughs> watch terrifier yeah wolfman <laughs> <laughs> so i understand you people are split over that one divided in the nads <laughs> that was the biggest i i thought that it had to have been an like, ending parting the red sea <laughs> <laughs> Parting the Red Sea. I like that. That's awesome. Parting the, the Red Sea. I, I knew it was going to happen before it did. They set it up just so, like, right before it happened, you're like, oh, he's not. Oh, he's not going to. Oh, he's not. And they're like, oh, he's doing it. Oh, God, yeah, he's doing going, it. Dude. Going and going. I was like the Energizer Bunny. I just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, that's I was like, I'm never going to be the same again. This is it. I'm not the same person anymore that I was before this movie began. <laughs> You've been changed. I'm changed. <laughs> For the better? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> so it, it's totally an honor, David. Thank oh, you so thanks. much for coming on the show. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> for the actual def technical defects that happen. Um, pictures, yeah, stories, I hit the whole nine yards. And That's a good movie too. Damn you, Apple. <laughs> <laughs> damn you. I would love to have you on again if we could. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, David, what do you have? going on uh, mid-December? I have no idea yet. <laughs> we shall see. I'm taking that as a commitment. So, yeah. Danny, what do you have going on? I, I get to interview David. So that if I get to interview him again, like that's what's going on. Like <laughs> We shall see what happens. Yeah. Hopefully soon. Thank you again. Um, we're going to bail out now. All right. Um, Thank you. I'm for still flabbergasted so with the half hour delay. Ah. Danny, I'm going to let you close it out. So I'm going to let you close it out with David. All right. Well, thank you again so incredibly much for, for coming on. I can't tell you. It's such an honor. I, I mean, I've been fangirling over this now since I heard that we were going to get to do this interview. I've been so excited. So I can't wait to actually get to meet you in Chicago. Yes. And um, hopefully we'll get to do this again. That would be incredible. Oh, um, definitely. If you could stick around for just a moment after we uh, go off live, that'll give Joe a quick chance to kind of go over a couple of things with us. Okay. But again, thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who's tuned in. Um, it's going to be available again on YouTube.
we'll be able to share the link once it's downloaded and the intro is put in. So, yay! Bye. Bye. <laughs>